Good morning and welcome to Church of the Redeemer worship this morning. We are a just peace and open and affirming congregation. No matter where you are on life's journey, you matter. And we are glad that you are here for worship. Our congregation has always done an excellent job in welcoming people and changing to the Zoom platform should not change that. If you notice someone who may be a visitor on here, please be sure to say good morning to them when they log on or goodbye when they are logging off. Everyone's names are on their picture, think, so you can think of it as their name tag. We want to be sure to continue our extravagant welcome, even via Zoom. I invite you to join me tomorrow at 1 p.m. for Bible study. If you need that Zoom link, please um, contact me via email and I will send it to you. The book discussion for Waking Up White will continue this week. We will have in-person discussion at 2 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon and um, evening discussion via Zoom on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. In addition to worshiping here, on Zoom, video of this service will be on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel by some time on Monday. And we did have 23 people on the lawn this morning at 9 a.m. for worship, and five of those people were visitors. Please continue your contributions for the Westlake Food Pantry. Their specific needs are listed in the grapevine and you can leave them in the box outside the front doors. Our in gathering for this month is for Lakewood Community Service Center and America Scores. However, please note that the Lakewood Service Center is not accepting school supplies. So please do not drop off school supplies, but America Scores is accepting um, granola type bars. Um, so please consider leaving those in the box outside the front door so that we can support America scores. Thank you to Wayne and Margaret Borelli for designing the display of flags that are now up in our front yard. Thanks also to the 10 other volunteers who showed up. Lisa Thomas, Julie Barnes, Jill Negre, Aaron Williams, Jeff Reichs, Matthew Williams, Karen Farmer, Sue McKeon, Ryan Brown, and Martin Walsh. Although sadly there are more deaths than flags at this time, it still serves as a reminder that each of those lives lost, each, each of those flags represents a life lost and represents one of God's beloved who were surely welcomed into God's arms upon their death. I want to give you a big thank you for continuing to support this church even while the building is closed. Leadership team met on Monday evening and despite um, the fact that we are in the middle of a pandemic, we are doing well financially because of your faithfulness in your giving. I also want to tell you that I spoke with Bruce Barkhauer this week. And um, first of all, he said to please pass on Sally's um, greetings to all of you. But I was proud to tell him how well we were doing financially. And his first question was, that was with a PPP loan, correct? And I said, no, that was without a loan. And so well done, church, and thank you for your faithfulness. You can continue to mail your gifts or donate online via the website. Thank you for being with us today as we continue to participate in worship using technology. We know that no matter where we are, God is with us. Let us be in an attitude of worship as we listen to the prelude.
I invite you to join in the call to worship. You have called us to this place, O Lord. Each one of us is unique with different gifts and talents. Yet each talent represented here is valuable in God's realm. Lord, help us find ways in which to use our talents for healing and hope. Come, let us praise the Lord who has called us here. Let us open our hearts and spirits to God's word for us. Amen. Please join me in singing hymn number 52, There is a Name I Love to Hear. prayer of invocation. Lord, be with each of us today. We have come seeking your guidance and direction for our lives. Help us recognize the gifts you have given to us and enable us to put these gifts to good use in your world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, you've probably heard um, someone being called, someone calling someone a silly goose. I happen to do that to my grandchildren when they're being silly. But I'm realizing that geese are far from silly and we can learn a lot. And it um, kind of fits with our scripture for today that we'll hear shortly. Um, I don't know if, well, pretty much everyone knows if you look up, you'll see that geese fly in a V formation and there's a reason for that. There's actually a scientific reason that um, it takes some, it adds some lift to the people that are, to the geese that are flying behind. In fact, they can fly 70% farther if they fly in this formation. So when the lead goose gets tired, all it has to do is fall back into formation and another takes its place. I can't think of a better visual of teamwork and thinking about our church so I think that's a beautiful image to keep I don't know um, also before I see them I usually hear them that that honk 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 you can tell they're coming and you look up ahead to see where they are and I think they're honking to encourage one another I think we'd all agree that it's easier to do something difficult when others are cheering you on and I've heard that when a goose gets sick and has to drop down, that two other geese will go with him. 
and wait until he is well again, and then they can join another formation and keep on the journey. So what do we have to learn from this? I think that church members can share the responsibility within the church and not let um, a few loyal ones in the front drop after being so exhausted. I think we can use our own voices to honk and encourage one another. And I think we, we do a good job of reaching out to those who are sick and in need. I also learned something else fascinating this week that was an aside to what I was preparing for this morning. I'm reading a book called Celtic Daily Prayer, and it comes from a community that follows um, the practices of the ancient Christians in Great Britain. And they not only look at the Holy Spirit as a dove, but as a wild goose. So something to ponder on, and you can Google that. There's some really interesting reasons why they, they think that. So for now, whenever we hear that familiar honking and look up and see that V formation, we can be reminded that we're not alone. We're a community. We can trust each other to help us get to our destination when we're flying together. Let us pray. God, thank you for giving us the geese to remind us how to use the gifts that you've given us to help each other and to further your work in the world. Through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, the wild goose, one God, amen. Thank you. scripture reading today comes from Psalms 124. If I had not been God, who was on our side? Let Israel now say, if it had not been God, who was on our side when our enemies attacked us? Then they would have swallowed us up alive when their ang anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the sovereign, our God, who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the, sn the snar of the f fowlers the snarl of the broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of God, who made heaven and earth. 
our God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Our focus scripture this morning is from Romans 12, verses 1 through 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the teacher in the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. May God add a blessing to the hearing and the understanding of these words. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts help us to see your work in our life, transforming us into a living sacrifice. And may our words and our actions be acceptable in your sight, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. In 12 step programs, there are indeed 12 steps, but the very first step is to admit that you are powerless over your addiction. And quickly, once we have admitted that we are powerless over our addiction, it becomes apparent that we are truly powerless over everything. The second step involves needing a higher power, which I refer to as God. And often when you are in a meeting or meeting with a sponsor, you may hear the idea that you should hit pause, the pause button before you take that first drink or eat that first bite or use that first drug. Christianity is similar. God is God and we are not. God desires a relationship with us. And when we think we can do it all ourselves, we often need to hit the pause button and remember step one. All of those things are included in our scripture this morning. God's transforming power, God's work in our life, and our need to pause before we launch into doing and recognize that it is God doing the work. Paul's letter to the Romans is encouraging them to not live according to the empire, but according to the kingdom of God. It begins in chapter 11, in chapter 11 and continues in these verses in chapter 12. Paul is making the point to the Romans that living a Christian life is different than living a life following the empire. While we cannot make exact parallels between 
between what Paul was writing about and the 21st century, there are definitely similarities. We live in a world that emphasizes individualism. We hear a lot these days about what our rights are with disregard for how that might impact others. We are taught it is what we do that will get us ahead, not the privileges that may be inherent for us. And not to mention what role God plays in how our life unfolds. Fortunately, we do not live in an empire. Rome, the, the government of Rome had far more power than our government does. But sometimes we give away the power that we have within our government. We allow our government to pass laws that are in conflict with our Christian values. And when we sit in silence or do not let them know of our displeasure, we give away our, the power of our voice. We can get caught up in what we need to do to be good Christians. But oftentimes we need to pause and consider what God is calling us to. How is God calling us as a church to do ministry? Don't answer that question right away, but pause. The question may not be what we need to do but how we need to be. When I led Bible study on Monday, I looked around my screen and I saw a wide variety of gifts. And as I look at this screen, I see equally as many gifts. We do not all have the same gifts. And that is a blessing. I will tell you, I am not a detail person, but a big picture person. I need others around me to help me think out those details. I admit that I often get into a project and then deal with the details. And that is not always successful. But some of us think through every possible scenario that could happen. And a simple project suddenly seems insurmountable. I look around at all of you and I see many, many gifts among this beloved gathering. Your mere presence here is a gift, not because of what you do, but simply because of your being. The multitude of gifts that exist in this congregation is what makes this congregation successful. And we are successful. Hear that. We have maintained a steady attendance in the midst of a pandemic and gained a few new people along the way. We are fiscally healthy in the midst of a pandemic and even had the ability because of your faithfulness for an additional project of new sidewalks in the midst of all that is going on. We have youth. I could stop right there. But we have youth who gathered together this summer for fellowship in new ways. 
Yes, we must continue to work on recognizing our successes, but we are successful and we need to pause to celebrate that fact. We each have different gifts to contribute, not just things we can do, but ourselves as gifts to help make this congregation continue to be successful. So how do we live our lives as if they are a living sacrifice? First, we have to define sacrifice. Instead of viewing it as something that we give up, what if we considered sacrifice as putting ourselves out there for the sake of something else or someone else? Laying our gifts on the altar of justice. In everything that we did in our life, that we were a living sacrifice. We have to lose our individualism. God does not look out only for God's self. God makes room for us to be in relationship with God. And then we have to know what our gifts are and celebrate them. We are called to look forward for where we want to do ministries, not backwards. But we may keep some of the reasons we did ministries of the past, but do them in a different way. And after we are willing to sacrifice and give up our individualism, and celebrate our gifts, then we need to pause. Pause and allow God to work in God's time, just like I talked about in the Friday Reflections. We need to pause and dwell in God's presence and allow ourselves to be transformed. When we pause, we allow God to be God, and we do not have to work so hard to accomplish something. When we pause, we have time to nurture our relationship with God. When we pause, we make room for God to transform our lives. That is the good news. When we pause, we allow God to work to make us better versions of ourselves. And more than anything we do, that, I believe, is what God desires most. Amen. I invite you to join in singing hymn number 448, Take My Life, God, Let It Be. See? 
the time in the service in which we come before God. We come knowing that God will hear us and transform us. We come just as we are, as we wish we could be, and as we wish we were not, knowing that God's transforming love will help us be our best selves. Let us come to God with a time with first in a time of silent prayer. Let us pray. God who gifts us with many talents. We gather together to praise you and give thanks for your love. Your transforming love changes not only us, but those around us. Thank you for that transforming love. But many of us come with a deep sigh, a sigh after a difficult, challenging week and yet one in which you continually showed up. A sigh because we have been living in a worldwide pandemic for more than five months, and yet we have continued to find ways to worship God together. A sigh because there are wildfires raging in California and Colorado because we have failed to care for the earth. And yet there are first responders working to put the fires out and people fighting for care of God's creation. A sigh because there does not seem to be any good answer about returning to school or not returning to school and any decision comes with risks. And yet parents, teachers, and school administrators are working to ensure safe environments and effective learning. A sigh because even in 2020, black and brown people do not receive the same quality of health care as their white siblings. And yet people of all colors are standing up and demanding equality. A sigh because we know there are those in our community who are grieving and yet you show up to provide them comfort in the form of a phone call or card that arrives at exactly the right time. A sigh because we know there are people who are sick or recovering and caregivers who are tired yet your presence is felt in the caring of nurses and doctors and friends and family who provide much needed respites. A sigh of awe, of awe for the beautiful morning, summer mornings and beautiful summer nights and socially distant time spent with friends. A sigh for those we now name out loud. Cal, Jim, Brad, myself, Steph. Emily and Vicki, Tolu, Kit. Charlie and Zach for her injuries, and um, Daniel Zach, and Julie and Mark, and Caleb, and um, Natalie for anything they need, and for all the people that need healing in the world and for all the COVID, and God um, heals this COVID virus. Amen. We sigh knowing that even when we do not have the words, you transform us in your time so that we can continue to be followers of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray, saying, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day Give us our trust as we forgive those against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yours is the power of the Amen. I invite you to join in singing hymn number 177, God of Change and Glory. Before I do the benediction, if any of you would be interested in having a hymnal delivered to your house, um, you please call the church office and we will bring you one. If you are perfectly happy continuing to print um, your hymns, that is fine, but there are plenty around here and we would be happy to deliver some. So please just call the church office and let us know. And now may you love God so much that you not love nothing else too much. And may you fear God just enough 
that you need fear nothing else at all. Go in peace. Amen.